you're like what? Some kind of big pro? Not impressed. Sorry. No, I'm really just a kid. A kid with a sweet dad. Say, Yeah, never say, I got to go, go. Hey there, everybody. It's me, Casual Cooper, and it's time to talk about the craziest character to ever show up in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Season 2. It's time to talk about Princess Rose, the frog girl. And I mean the legit frog girl because she uses the old school frogs that I know and love before they started getting crazy. And I still like the new frogs too, but these were the old ones that I know and love. So let's go ahead and dive on into what her deck's about. She, well, let's talk about her first. She's a character that literally thinks herself a princess, and I think that's just adorable, except the fact that she's an adult. Which starts to make me think about that one movie, which I can't remember, the, was it Enchanted? I can't remember the name of the movie, unless that was the name, of a woman that actually was from a Disney universe or whatever and got transported to the real world and thought she was a princess and everyone just kind of went with it. Because they are in New York and they're just like, oh, okay, she's crazy like everyone else here. No. This woman is actually insane and she goes to dual academy and is like i need my prince my prince is a frog and she's talking to her cards like some crazy person Jaden. <laughs> and she's talking to her cards like some crazy person talking about finding her prince so let's go ahead and think about this she shows up to an academy full of students challenges those students to a duel and the entire time is talking to her deck about her being a princess and about her needing to find her prince and nobody stopped the duel no psych evaluations were were made which honestly is good because by the end we figure out she actually can just straight up talk to dual spirits she's only a little bit crazy she's still crazy i don't care what anybody says she's still crazy she's still a little uh she's only a little bit crazy and that you know maybe she should just Try to play it a little normal. Don't 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 dress up like the princess. Now, personally, in the Yu-Gi-Oh universe, you should be able to dress up however you want. We got freaking Zane this season looking like an emo kid. She could look like a princess for all I care. The problem is she's going a little too deep into it. And I would honestly be okay with that if it was the right area. Like if she went to a Comic-Con or something, or if she happened to be in a group of people she trusted that, you know, she just wants to have fun with and be like, you know, play like a little D&D session or something. I get it. You showed up to a group of children, and you just start talking this way. I would call the cops immediately. But moving on to her deck, because she's a duelist, and duelist, the duelist part of her is the only part that matters, not the insane part. Um, her deck's a little interesting. She uses old school frogs like her Des Frog mini boss monster, a five star monster with 1900 attack. She has the Mother Grizzly to help search out her frogs like the Bielza frog, a frog that starts out kind of weak but gets stronger for each tadpole in the graveyard. At max power, it could have as much as 2100 attack, which is not bad for a level three monster. Um, she has the Poison Draw Frog, which is kind of just something I added to her deck. Which is nice, because it's a frog that when this face-up card on the field is uh, sent to the graveyard, you get to draw a card. Drawing a card is nice. She has the Legendary Treeborn Frog, which a lot of people have used in decks in the past. Maybe even in the future, I don't know. Um, this annoying card, uh, if you have no cards in your Spell Trap card zone, every standby phase can be special summoned to your side of the field in attack or defense mode. In other words, as long as you don't have any spells or traps face up on the field, or face down on the field, you'll always have a monster, which is super freaking handy. And in her deck, it actually plays two roles, because they're gonna, I'll, 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 I'll talk about that in a bit. She also has the tadpoles, which are used for searching out more tadpoles and putting these in the graveyard. The tadpoles combo with the Des Frog, because for each tadpole in your graveyard, after you tribute summon a Des Frog, you could special summon that many more, depending on how many tadpoles you have in the grave. In other words, if you can get two of these buggers in the grave, you tribute summon Des Frog after a mother grizzly gets destroyed like on a poison draw frog or something you get to summon two more summoning three des frogs on the field it's an effective combo honestly she has the des croaking which if you have three des frogs on the field you get to destroy 
all of your opponent's cards. Monsters, spells, traps, spirits. The spirits die. Ojama Yellow will die. No, I'm joking. But yeah, they do just straight up die. It's a really powerful card, but it is a total brick until you can pull off triple Desrog on the field, which for her is not the hardest thing to do, but it's not the easiest either. She also runs the Foolish Burial, which she has a lot of. This is good for putting Treeborn Frog or Tadpoles in the graveyard. These will help out the Bezel, Bielza Frog and the Des Frog. So Foolish Burial does play a good role in this deck. Um, she's got Graceful Charity and Monster Born like everyone else. She's got Polymerization because guess what? Her frogs do fuse into something and we'll get to that in a bit. She's got the Pot of Greed. Yep, Salvage is super good in her deck. It works on every card but her mini boss, Des Frog. She's got Defusion, which is a really powerful card with her Fusion Monster because if she defuses, she gets triple 1900 beaters and those 1900 beaters can do good work. MSTs. You can see these in any deck. She's got Umi to buff her water monsters, which is really nice. Um, her monsters are a little weak, so the Umi will help out. Uh, she has the Froggy Force Field, which was a gift from me. She is not supposed to have this card, but it is a gift from me, which is it's a mirror force as long as you have a face-up frog monster you control. So if you have a face-up frog monster you control, your opponent gets mirror force. That's right. This character has a legitimate mirror force. Because every, well, not Tadpole. These are frogs, 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 frogs. Not her, not the Mother Grizzly. Frogs. And frog. We'll get to that. Um, we have the Call of the Haunted Classic, Magic Jammer Classic, Seven Tools Classic. You guys know what those do. It's time to talk about her boss, though. The D3S Frog. This monster gets a buff for every Treeborn Frog in the graveyard. So because she runs three, it can have a maximum attack stat of 4,000! She could take on the Obelisk the Tormentor with this D3S Frog if she happens to have three Treeborns in the grave, which is doable thanks to her Foolish Burials. And, you know, the fact that they're weak and they can be destroyed easily. But also, it's just a 2,500 beater that's kind of nice to have. And it's easy to fuse because Des Frogs are easy to special summon with their effect and Mother Grizzly and Treeborn Frog. It's not hard to pull off triple DS, D3, uh, DS, uh, Des Frogs in this deck. It is not hard to do it. Thanks to Mother Grizzly, thanks to Tab Pulse, thanks to Foolish Burial, and thanks to this, it's not hard. Which means pulling off Des Croaking isn't even hard. And I'm saying this from experience. I tested this deck. This deck is actually pretty consistent at getting three uh, D Des Frogs on the field. And these things, just as 1900 beaters, sometimes 21 with Umi, are actually pretty scary. So her deck actually has some backing. It's actually not the worst deck in the world. But let's go ahead and get into her stats, which are going to, you know, make me sound like a liar because her stats are kind of ass. Yeah. Let's really, really delve into these stats. So starting with the attack stat, not the best. And I have good reason to say this. It's not the best because her mini boss monster that isn't her effusion, which means the monster she is most likely to summon as her strongest card is a tribute monster with only 1900 attack. Her strongest non-fusion monster only has 1900 attack. Yes, she can get stronger with Bielsa Frog if three tadpoles are in the grave. But other than that, she's screwed. She's 100% screwed. So this monster could be stronger than this monster, but only if you have the perfect conditions. Uh, when it comes to attack stat, she is very much in trouble. Not the worst, it's just below average. It's not very below average, it's just below average. It was gonna be very below average, but I gave her a break because these monsters get buffed and these monsters get buffed. So this saved her, this saved her, and this helped her. But overall, she's ass. When it comes to attack stat, she's, she's below average. Moving on to her speed stat, that's where things are great. She is one of the fastest characters in this series because guess what? Special summons, special summons. Uh, draw power, special summons, search power. Um, technically, this is speed. Technically. Um, let's see. Special summons. Fusion is special summons. Salvage, search power, special summons. And that's about it. Everything else that does it, does it. And this card doesn't really do it. So there you go. She actually does have a lot of speed in this deck. It is a fast deck. It's just not very good at anything else. Um, because we move on to her skill stat... I would say this deck has a small chance of winning through stall because if you could get three Treeborn Frogs in the grave as long as you play no spells or traps, which she only has four traps, so the odds of her having a trap is pretty rare, and she doesn't have to set any of these spells. The only one is Umi, and you only play that when you want to go aggressive. Save the Umi in your hand until you're ready to go aggressive. Um, She could just keep summoning three monsters every single turn, Specially, and then normal summon a monster whenever she feels like it. 
So she actually does have a little bit of stall in this deck. Just the smallest amount you could possibly imagine, but she does have it. It's the smallest amount, but it exists. Moving on to the defense stat, it's ass. Death Frogs, zero. Mother Grizzlies, a thousand. Beals of Frogs, 800. Poison Frogs, 100. 100, zero. Terrible. This deck is not about defense. This deck will die if you try to play it defensively. You could play it stally with the Treeborns. And that's it. You can't play it defensively. You will lose the duel. You have to play aggressive, despite the fact that her deck is not very aggressive. She can't win through skill, really, so you actually do have to win through battle. And I know that seems a little scary, but it's doable. It's definitely doable thanks to Des Croaking and thanks to her boss monster actually beating a good beater monster. And it can only get better with the Treeborn Frogs. Moving on to her Brick stat, that's where we run into trouble. I know it's weird to have a bad Brick stat when you have a good speed stat, but you have to hear me out. Most of these cards are ass. Des Croakings are Bricks. 100% Bricks. Foolish Burials are not Bricks technically, but they're not actively helpful. They're future help. These cards will help you in the future. They don't help you the turn you draw them. Uh, salvage, it's not too much of a brick. Defusion and Polymerization, definitely brick cards. 100% brick cards. Uh, Umi, it's fine, but it's not great. Froggy Force Field in this deck is not a brick. And the uh, rest of this, whatever. So she's not the most bricky, but she's pretty damn bricky. And even the monsters that she can draw might as well be considered bricks because they're all ass. Everyone, uh, freaking Crowler with Ancient Gear Beast could beat her. Her entire deck, unless she pulls off the fusion somehow. His Ancient Gear Beast counters Mother Grizzly. It counters Poison Draw Frog. It counters Tadpole. And then the other cards were just too weak anyway. It's really sad. Her deck is super weak. But when it comes to the potential of winning the tournament, I've tested this deck against so many of the other ones. And its win rate was about 30%. Which might be a little higher than you expect. And the reason is... If you play this deck a little stally, and you try to get tadpoles in the graveyard, you actually could pull off a triple Des Frog Des Croaking pretty easily, and then from there get the fusion just by holding out long enough or beating your opponent up with th triple 1900 beaters. It is possible to win duels with this deck. Do I think it's possible to win the tournament with this deck? No. I think this deck is just too inconsistent and too weak to straight up win the tournament. There are too many other better competitors out there. And yes, she could get lucky against some of them, but let's think about it like this. Oh, she beats uh, Zane Cyber Dragon Fusion Monster. Great. Oh, he drew Cyber Dragon. Oh, Cyber Dragon beats all of her cards. Except her fusion, which is hard to summon. She He can beat all of her cards with just one Cyber Dragon, no fusion necessary. You understand what I'm saying, people? She is in so much trouble in this tournament, but her deck is really fun to use. I had so much fun testing this deck. Just focus on trying to pull off the Des Croaking combo or the Fusion. If you can pull those off or stall with Treeborn Frog, do what you gotta do. If you can pull those off, you actually can make a pretty decent deck out of this, but not one that can win the tournament. So that's why I'm gonna be giving Princess Rose a one and a half stars. I think she can win a duel with this deck. I think she can win a match with this deck. I don't think she can go farther than round one. I think if she gets to round two, that's where she's going to get knocked out. But who knows? Maybe a human player can make this deck better than I did during the test duels. We'll see what happens. If you enjoyed this, please remember to like and subscribe. Princess Rose is one of the more interesting characters. If you like crazy people, play as her. If you are a crazy person, play as her. If you like frogs, play as her. See ya.